بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد باب التوبة قال العلماء التوبة واجبة من كل ذنب فإن كانت المعصية بين العبد وبين الله تعالى لا تتعلق بحق آدمي فلها ثلاثة شروط إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على محمد بك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنات المسلمين والمسلمات وبشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قوي ربي زين علمه ربي يسر ولا تعسر وتمن الخير بك نستعين نستغفر الله العظيم الذي لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم ونتوب إليك نستغفر الله العظيم الذي لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم ونتوب إليك نستغفر الله العظيم الذي لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم ونتوب إليه الحمد لله أن هذا باب هذا شابتر في التوبة few virtues and benefits of Tawbah were discussed. Number one, that the person who does Tawbah, a person who brings his life to obedience, he moves from disobedience to obedience, from breaking the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's fulfilling the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from moving from the makruhat, he's abandoning the makruhat and leaving the makruhat out, and now he's also practicing upon the mustahab, <coughs> mustahabbat and those action, actions which are preferable. And then this person will become the beloved servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change his evil deeds into good deeds. Number three, this tawbah will make a person enter into, enter into Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not oppress the person. Number four, this will become the means of him being in the group of the believers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept for them great amount of reward. Number five, we mentioned that every human, every person is going to slip, is going to make a mistake. But the best of those who commit a mistake are those who turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continuously in abundance. Number six, we mentioned that that a person who does tawbah is as though he has never done a sin, he has never committed a sin. Virtue number seven is that Nabi Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam he says that Abu, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu says that the shaitan he says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I will continue to lead your servants astray. I will continue taking them away from the right path as long as their souls are in their body. مَا دَامَتْ أَرْوَاحُهُمْ فِي أَجْسَادِهِمْ As long as the souls are in their body I will continue driving them away from the right path and away from, from the purpose of their creation and purpose of their life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in reply, he says that لا أزال أغفر لهم ما As long as they continue seeking forgiveness, as, they, as long as they continue turning towards me, I will continue forgiving them. I will continue wiping their sins away and I will continue showering my mercy towards them. So this is one benefit of Tawbah, that if we continue doing Tawbah, then the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue turning towards us. So even though we feel that you know, we have done a sin, we've committed a, mis- you know, a, 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 a mistake and we've committed a sin, a person shouldn't become hopeless. A person shouldn't think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to be merciful to me. No. We continue doing tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to forgive us and he will continue shower his mercy upon us. The Mawlana Shaykh Ali Tanwi rahmatullahi alayhi, he says that you know, you've got two people. One person who passes away at the age of 50, and the second person also passes away at the age of 50. One person didn't have, the first person didn't have the habit of doing Tawbah. The second individual had the, had the habit of doing Tawbah on a daily basis. On a daily basis, he had the habit of doing Tawbah. Now, on the day of judgment, when the account will take place, when the judgment will take place, the first individual will have more questions to answer. Maybe 30, 40 years of his life, he'll have to answer the questions of all the wrong he has done. And the second individual who has continued doing Tawbah on a daily basis, it's possible only a few hours of question that he will have to answer. Because why? If the person done Tawbah in the morning and he passed away during the day, it was only several hours that he had, that he lived, uh, you know, maybe he has committed a sin, but there were only a few hours. And the person did Tawbah in the evening, and if, you know, he passed away during the night, there's only a few hours that he had to give account to. So this is another benefit of doing Tawbah. So Alhamdulillah we mentioned seven benefits. There are many many other virtues and benefits of doing Tawbah. Now the next topic, next subject we will discuss under this Tawbah is that why does a person not do Tawbah? What prevents a person doing Tawbah? 
What makes him think that, look, I don't want to do the Tawbah? What prevents a person? And what, you know, makes a person stay away from Tawbah? There are few reasons, few causes. Number one, when a person, you know, when you are enjoying something, we don't realize the consequences at that time. For example, we all know eating, you know, fast food, eating takeaway food is not healthy for us. You know, there's a end result is bad. It's not bad. It's not good for you. Give, let me give another example of the smoking. A person knows that is you know, smoking is harmful for his lungs and is harmful for his body. But because he's enjoying at that time, he doesn't think of the harms. He doesn't think of the harm. So like this, when a person is busy committing a sin, he doesn't realize the consequences of the sin. He doesn't think of the consequences of the sin. So he's too busy enjoying that sin. That a person doesn't think of doing the toba. A person doesn't think of doing the toba. Whereas a person should realize that, okay, I'm smoking away. It is possible the next day I will see the effect and the harms of that uh, of the, uh, uh, cigarette immediately. It's possible that next day or the day, week after, I will see the harm. Like this, a person is doing the, sober, uh, uh, doing the sin. He doesn't realize that I might not even be alive to do the toba tomorrow. So what prevents a first thing that prevents a person from doing the tawbah is the buzz of doing the sin, of committing the sin. And that feeling that a person has, he doesn't think of doing the tawbah, he just continues doing the sin. Number two, what prevents a person from doing tawbah and continue doing the sin is the excuse of taqdeer. Fate and destiny. A person thinks that is destined for me to do this. It's written in my taqdeer to do this sin, so I'm going to do the sin. Whereas the scholars explain that if it's the matters of the world, a person doesn't think of that or whatever is going to happen, happen. No, he will wake up early, he'll go to work, he'll look for opportunities for him to become wealthy, he'll look for opportunities for him to invest. He's got one investment, mashallah, he, you know, he's uh, increasing and he's making a lot of benefit and profit. Now you think of another investment, something else has popped up, his mind will go towards that. His mind will go towards the third one. He might go to the fourth one. So he doesn't think, chalo, whatever is going to happen in Taqdeer, let me just sit at home and relax and just chill on the sofas. No, he'll do something about it. He doesn't think of Taqdeer then. He'll work towards something. He'll want to become the business, uh, you know, successful business person. So why is it that for the matters of the world, we don't think of Taqdeer and just chill out and just relax and let things happen? But when it comes to you know, the dini matters, when it comes to Akhirat, people, you know, we have this habit, or we may not, Alhamdulillah, inshallah, we don't. The purpose, you know, that's one of the causes that a person thinks that till you part of Taqdeer, let me just do the same. And that shouldn't be the excuse. The way we work hard towards earning this world, we should have worked even more harder towards earning the eternal life. This world is temporary. You know, we have the money in our hands. Next day, it will go away. You know, it will be out of our control. That's what money is. It rotates around. It's in our possession for one or two days. It goes into somebody else's possession. The second person has it for a couple of days. You go to the shop, you go to the third person and somebody else gets it. So that's what money is. It just keeps rotating, rotating. But whatever we work for the akhirat, inshallah, will be for us. So the first thing that prevents a person from doing tawbah is, as we mentioned, that the buzz of committing a sin. Number two, excuse of taqdeer. Number three, person has this thing in front of him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ar-Rahman and ar-Rahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most merciful. He's very compassionate. He's going to forgive me anyway. He's ghaffar, he's ghafur, he's ghafir. He's going to forgive me. So what? Let me just do the sin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to forgive me. He's very merciful. Whereas a person should also realize and should uh, remind himself that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also do justice. He's also al qahar. He will do justice. He will make you face the consequences of your actions. If you've done something wrong, he's got the power of you know, um, uh, gripping you and holding his account straight away. And it is just the mercy of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that we don't see the consequences of our actions immediately. Imagine if we were to see the result of our sin every day, nobody will be alive. Myself won't be alive because of the sins that we do. But it's just the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that He just satari and He covers and He envelops us and He hides away our sins and He, you know, He, did, he doesn't punish us in this world. Yes. There are effects of sins. There are effects of good deeds and there are effects of sins that we may experience in this world. But that does not mean that a person should just become the child of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful and continue living a sinful life. No. A person should realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can also, all of a sudden, hold account. You can hold me account. The person should do tawbah. Number four, something that we prevents a person doing tawbah is that a person think 
that I'm going to do sin again anyway. I've committed one sin now. I'm going to do another sin afterwards. I'm going to do another third sin afterwards. So what's the point of doing me toba now? What's the point of doing me toba? Whereas Allah, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he explains that even if you were to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 70 times a day, if you were to break your toba 70 times a day, even then he's ready to accept your forgiveness. He's even then he's ready to accept your toba. So if a person has done a sin, a person shouldn't think, well, let me just do another, th- another, 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 another. No. A person should return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately. Then if a person did slip again and he did do something wrong, then again, turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again. He will forgive us again. He's ready to forgive us. You know, he's more merciful than, uh, to us than even you know, many times more than a mother is to a child. So a person shouldn't think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not, uh, a person shouldn't think that, okay, I've done one sin. Let me continue doing another sin. Number four, uh, something that prevents the person doing Tawbah is that, when I, you know, this especially goes for the young people, is that when I grow older, I'll do Tawbah then. I'm still young, I'm still healthy, I've got a long life to live yet, I've got so many you know, uh, uh, um, plans ahead. Let me just do whatever I want now. When I grow older, then I will do, this, uh, do Tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas a person does not even know that he is going to leave this gathering. Nobody has this guarantee that he will be able to leave this gathering. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of our death, the time of death. You go to the uh, Qabristan and the graveyard, you will see the stones with age written. They will be all different, different. And a child is, uh, you know, a baby does not even know that if he's going to be born into this world. A baby doesn't even know if he's going to last for a couple of hours. Many, you know, people experience or have this difficulty in their life that, you know, they go through the nine months of pregnancy and the same hour, the same day, within the 24 hours, the baby passes away. The person does not know, I himself don't know that when am I going to leave this world. So the person thinks that, you know, when I grow older, I'll do the toba then. So this is another thing that prevents a person doing toba. So these were the few things. And number six, ignorance of the sin. Ignorance of the sin meaning a person does not even know that he's doing wrong. A person does not even know that he's doing a sin. So when a person is not even aware of what he's doing, that he's not going to do the toba. So this is why what we need to do is that we need to, uh, you know, do a study, do the mutala and study and uh, um, sit in a gathering and um, read the, uh, the kitab and the books of our akabir. First of all, to understand what is a sin in Ma'arif al-Quran, Nadi Mufti Shafi Uthman rahmatullahi alayhi has given a detailed answer about what a sin is, what are the differences of sin in uh, Surah An-Nisa, ayat number 31, in, in this verse, he's given a long de- uh, answer and definition and explanation. Just to summarize what he's mentioned is, first of all, let's realize that any command of Allah we break, any command of Allah we break, anything we do against the will of Allah, at the end of the day is a sin. Anything that we do against the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, against the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a sin. You don't need to differentiate, is it small or big. So if you have this um, in your mind, that if I'm doing something against the command of Allah, that's a sin. Now, yes, because of the uh, ayat of the Quran and the hadith, the scholars have got a different view of what are the major sin and the major sin, uh, minor sin. But some scholars say that we don't even need to look towards that. And they give the, he gives the explanation of a scorpion. When you have a small scorpion or big scorpion, when you have a small fire or a big fire, we all know that both of them will harm us, will d- bring destruction. So you go into the small scorpion, doesn't think that is a small snake or small scorpion, let me just play around with it. No, that could harm us and also the big scorpion and the big snake and the big fire can also harm us. Like this, a person, if he want, you know, has this in mind that small sin, big sin, everything is a sin at the end of the day, then the person will, will stay away from this. However, because of the uh, hadith and the Quran, he has given a bit of a definition of what the kabair and what the sagair is. Now, talking about the minor sin, he explains that if a person was to continue doing a minor sin, then a person continue doing the minor sin will make that a big major sin as well. If a person continues a minor sin, thing in general is only a minor, is only small, but when a person continues doing that, that itself becomes a major. Now, what is a major sin? Major sin is where we may find an indication in the Quran, we may find an indication in the hadith, that there is a punishment, there is a had, there is a punishment for this, even in this world. There's a punishment that we may have to face uh, in this world also and definitely in the hereafter. So those sins which are mentioned where there is a, a, a curse on that person or a punishment 
he has to face some, you know, uh, judgment in this world, definitely in the hereafter. And that's one uh, explanation of what a major sin is. And the Mufti Sahib has given many uh, different ahadiths to make, you know, to uh, explain this further. Inshallah, we'll just um, mention one or two things here. So Abdullah ibn Abbas, he says that somebody said to him that there are seven major sins. He said, no, 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 don't say seven. There are 700 major sins. 700 major sins. Ibn Hajar al-Makki, in his kitab, he has um, given the definition, he has given a list of around 467 major sins. There's a kitab by Imam Shab, uh, Shamsuddin Dhabi by the name Al-Kabair, major sin. He has listed around 70, we just read through the sins, so then we become aware of what, the, you know, what major sins are. Number one, ascribing associates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, i.e. shirk. Number two, killing a human being. Number three, sorcery. Number four, not performing the salah. Number five, not paying zakat. Number six, breaking one's fast during the month of Ramadan without a valid excuse. Number seven, not performing hajj when able to do so. Number eight, showing, dis showing disrespect to one's parents. Number nine, uh, severing ties to one's relatives, breaking ties of, to one's relatives. Number 10, adultery. Number 11, sodomy. Number 12, accepting um, interest. Number 13, consuming an orphan's property in the wrong way. Number 14, lying about the Prophet Wasallam. Number 15, fleeing from the battlefield. Number 16, the leader who misleads his followers, the tyrant or the oppressor. Number 17, arrogance, pride, haughtiness. Number 18, bearing false witness. Number 19, drinking alcohol. 20, gambling. 21, accusing a woman of adultery. Number 22, misappropriating spoils of war. The gift, the, what we uh, get from war to uh, uh, use that inappropriately. Or even the funds and the zakat money. Number 13, theft. Number 14, robbing. Number 15, engulfing in oath. Uh, number 26, uh, number 25. Number 26, taking person's property through falsehood. It's 27, collecting taxes. 28, each of these require explanation. They require explanation and understanding of what these are. There's good 70 of them. 29, suicide, telling lies, dishonest, judge, bribery, women imitating men and vice versa, men imitating women, uh, number, you know, freeing oneself from all traces of, not freeing from uh, traces of urine, not freeing oneself from all traces of urine, showing off in good work, breach of faith, disbelieving in dis uh, destiny, cursing others, breaking a person's promise, picture making, hurting one's neighbor, hurting um, or a Muslim, harming a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the men wearing silk or gold, fleeing, uh, um, slaughtering in other than Allah's name, arguing, um, s slaughtering in other, uh, in other than Allah's name. In f the next one is bringing loss to the bequest, decep deception, deceiving somebody, and there are so many of them. So these are the few sins, major sins, which have been you know, um, gathered in this kitab. So just to conclude, what prevents a person from doing Tawbah? Number one, we mentioned that a person you know, gets the buzz of doing the sin. He continues in that habit. Number two, excuse of taqdeer. Number three, relying upon the quality of Allah, that Allah is all merciful and all forgiving. Number four, fearing that you know, I'm going to do another, another sin anyway, so what's the point of doing the Tawbah? Number five, um, thinking that I'm going to do the Tawbah later on when I'm older. And number six, a person not even aware of the sin. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to study what the sins are, give us the ability to understand how to stay away from these sins, how to do Tawbah from these sins, how to change our habits. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our gathering. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad wa barik wa sallim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa rasulik wa salli ala Muhammad wa sallim wa sallim سبحان الله وبحمده سبحانك الله وبحمدك نشهد الله لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك سبحان ربك رب العزة ما يصفون والسلام على المسلمين والحمد لله رب العالمين برحمتك يا رحمة الرحيم جزاك